so too have the triumphs of their favorite sons, the Flintstones of Michigan. Places like this are supposed to mean more at this time of the year. They all played together as kids at Burston Fieldhouse. 16 years after the players who learned the game at this gym, the ones they called the Flintstones, stormed to a national title at MSU. To the national title of the game. But this march, it's different. I can get two today. Because the people coming to Burston Fieldhouse in Flint are coming not because they love basketball, but because they need to, to survive. This is the mecca of uh, sports in, in the city of Flint. Anybody that's anybody in basketball had to come through Burston Fieldhouse. Glenn Rice, Mo Peterson, Charlie Bell, I mean, how can you forget the Flintstones? Good morning. Well, I know everybody a little sad around the table. And of course, you have been, what, what can I say? Just want to let you know that this broadcast... A.C. Dumas has lived in Flint virtually his whole life and loves to talk sports on his local radio show. But there's been another, bigger topic lately. This is March Madness, and we got some March Madness in the city of Flint. And I know Mayor Weaver want to talk about March Madness. As it relates to the water crisis, give us an update about the water uh, yeah, situation. Well, we still can't drink the water. There's an update for you. You know, we're continuing to treat it. Karen Weaver was elected mayor five months ago. And she walked into a city hall where she can't drink the water. It will be two years next year that Flint has been dealing with the issue of not being able to drink, cook, or use the water. Okay, a couple more. I know, you weren't looking to hear about a water crisis in the middle of your tournament. But let's take a minute to meet Yolanda Harrison. She drank the Flint tap water all through her pregnancy. Her son Langston's 10 months old now. She's getting him tested soon for lead. Uh, it's not a good situation. You don't see this here. You see this in third world countries, not here in the United States. This shouldn't happen. So what did happen? To fully understand, you need to know more about the city, what it was, and what it is today. Flint is a town that is struggling. The Buick plant left. The manufacturing jobs are gone. Tax revenue went. And so the city of Flint had to do more with less. So we've been through a lot. And, you know, then comes the water. The long and short of it is that about a year and a half ago, Flint made a controversial change in how it sources its water, switching from Lake Huron to the Flint River. But in making the change, the river water wasn't properly cleaned. The city's pipes corroded, and lead was released into the water supply. The water didn't taste right. It didn't look right. It didn't smell right. People were getting skin rash as their hair was falling out. So it didn't take a scientist to know something's wrong with this water. You know, you couldn't drink it, you couldn't cook with it. The best thing to say about the water of Flint is you can flush it. Back in the day, Burston was run by Justice Thigpen Sr., the first person from Flint to play in the NBA. Now it's hard for the local legend to reckon with what's happened in his hometown. You gonna tell me something like water is gonna kill us? Drinking water? Come on now. We're dealing with human lives, you know? And you can't put a value on human lives. If the government doesn't fix what they broke, uh, the ends look very bleak for the city of Flint. Life goes on, though, at Burston. And Bryant Nolden keeps showing up to run things here, even though the city can't afford to pay him. Because if not him, then who? We have a lot of people that are suffering here. And one thing about the city of Flint, we always band together to make sure that our people are taken care of. So where are we gonna get safe, clean water from? We can't change what happened, but we know that the people deserve some supports as a result of what happened. Because that's the only way we can do it, is together. Flint is a very resilient community. We adapt and we overcome. Just about every day, you can see the big trucks pull out in front of Burston, people coming down the streets and getting 
cases of water. Damn, you want some water? Because they know that when you can't go nowhere, you always come home. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Everywhere it's played, the game of basketball serves as the link between the past and the future. Now, it's shadowed by the dark realities of the present. Because if you go to an old field house on Saginaw Street in Flint, Michigan today, you'll come across a gym that's doubling as a water distribution center. But if this game and this tournament ever taught anyone anything, it's the simple idea that you survive by working together and refusing to let anyone or anything tell you when it's over.